I'm standing here as a senior police officer is because this is part of our commitment to you. You'll hear it said a number of times this afternoon about this being our community. I feel passionately that we want to build a safe, happy, prosperous community where you can all grow up, bring up your own families, live your lives, reach your aspirations as I've done. I'm a little kid from East Ham. I am now the number two in charge of about a thousand people in this borough. I could never have dreamt that when I was a kid. So you can live your dream, but it's about making the positive life choices. I come to you from America. I come to you from a place called New York where I've been to over 19 funerals and no one over that box has been over the age of 23. I come to you from a place where grandparents are burying their grandchildren in record numbers because kids think it's cool to represent a street gang, to turn their lives over to this idea that violence is the way, that gang violence is the way, that youth violence by any, is okay by all means. I think that really touched me because it made me realize that, that all the people that I'm having an argument with, I realized that there's no need for it and that just every little thing that's happening in my life and like just naturally, I just don't, I think it's really touched my heart and yeah. I just, I feel changed, I feel like it's changed me. And they talk about how glamorous and how beautiful gang life is to the point that a reporter in my first interview here says, gang life was quite glamorous, wasn't it? No, there was nothing glamorous about it. There's nothing glamorous about wondering every day you step foot outside of the house whether this will be your last day. There's nothing glamorous about seeing people that you love, people that you care about in that box and realizing, wow, 19 years of age, there's nothing glamorous about having your freedom stripped of you and you're treated like an animal, stripped of your name, given a number, told when to eat, when to sleep, when to drink. There's nothing glamorous about that. But I think about this on TV culture and I think about these rappers and I think about how so many of my beautiful little girls think that that's cute. <laughs> And there's a saying, the saying has gone on for a long time, and maybe some of the adults can help me out, and they say that good girls like bad boys. <laughs> wow, I said, that's good. Wow, I guess, I guess we do know a little bit about what we're talking about. Huh? I guess we do have similarities. And so you know what, I'm tired of going to schools across, and I can say this now, the world, and I'll find the most the cutest, most adorable girl going out with the dirtiest, ugliest bitches. I know a lot of people that's been involved in fights, that's been stabbed, and they are stabbed. No, a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot of things that's been going on. I think people have to be aware of the consequences, you know. So no matter how much we try and act like we're different, whether it's between young and old, whether it's between black, brown, white, yellow, we have to realize we have much more in common than we think. We are in this one together. My brothers and my sisters, I don't use the term lightly. Yeah, I come to you by ways of, yeah, I was that kid on that street corner. I was a misguided kid that, had no, that, that didn't know any better. But I sometimes sit back and wish and wonder, wow, what if in my neighborhood they would have offered us some alternatives? What if in my neighborhood, we would have had brand new school books? What if in my neighborhood, somebody would have put up a center where we could have gone and played sports and people would have reached out to us and said, listen, little brother, don't fall for the hype. Don't fall for what you see on television. Don't fall for what you hear on those radio stations. 
Don't fall for what you see on that box because none of that is reality. I was willing to die for a street corner that wasn't willing to die for me. And I lost two very dear friends and a third went to prison for 12 years of his life. And so people look at me and they say, wow, Serge, it's great the way you were able to change your life and you eventually, I got kicked out of school. I got kicked out of high school. God being me being in a church. Let me tell you something, I was angry. I was hurt, I was frustrated. Don't talk to me about some God I can't see. Don't talk to me about forgiveness. Don't talk, I was mad, I didn't want to hear that. How dare you talk to me about forgiveness when my friends are dying? How dare you talk to me about forgiveness when I swear to God I feel like I got no options and I'm mad and I'm angry and I'm hurt. Yeah, it hurts. Sometimes we have to come to terms with the people we have to forgive most are ourselves, man. This emptiness, this anger will kill you. And so what we've learned to do is breathe a little deeper, relax a little bit, and share your message of hope and inspiration. You see, forgiveness starts within yourself. I think there should be like more youth clubs in the area, in certain areas, more like not only youth clubs, but more certain things that should keep teenagers off the street so they can stop and, doing these things. And it's like they're stereotyping us. That's what makes everyone so angry as well. You might start dating one of these schools and maybe you'll be like my friend Amari, who's a beautiful 19-year-old girl and she was never a gang member. She was just friends with them. And she's hanging out on the corner and she's listening to some music come through her headphones and she is just hanging out and all of a sudden all of her friends, her homegirls, her homeboys start running and before she could turn around to see why they're running, she said she felt like somebody hit her in the back of the back and she fell to the floor and her headphones fell off. And she tries to get up and start fighting whoever hit her, but she couldn't move. And all of a sudden somebody yells out, Amori's been shot and she realizes that what knocked her to the ground wasn't a bat, but a bullet wound that ripped through her body. And as she laid on that floor, she talks about this unbearable pain and how hard it got for her to gasp for air. She didn't know that that bullet had ripped through her back, ricocheted up the front, ripped through one of her lungs, and struck a second lung, made its way up, and stopped an inch short of her heart. She talks about the first person she thought about was her mother. That same mother, she had screamed at, the same mother she wouldn't listen to, that same mother she felt didn't understand her, was the first person she thought about. She said she saw white, she was panicking, and she fell asleep. I think that should change the way like, people talk, like, like all this slang and stuff, that should change. We need to start believing that people aren't bad all the time just because they listen to rap and all hip hop and that. We need to like, let them, well, give them a chance yeah, to start things, youth clubs and whatnot. I'm minded like I always do. It's not your community. It's not my community. It's our community. And if we don't care of it, if we don't take care of it, who will? Thank you. Well, I thought, yeah, I thought um, that it was a big inspiration to me, and I really cried because um, that it really touched my heart. Because like I don't really cry for people, and I really cried. So touching, made me cry. Yeah. So it's the most powerful. It was really touching. Yeah. yeah, it's the most powerful speech I've ever heard.